Hi guys, Squirrel here, and welcome to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. This one's going to be a bit different. This is going to be a night flight in VFR. Uh, a few of you guys asked to see what night flying looks like, and I thought, well, why don't we combine this? Why don't we actually do a VFR night flight? And uh, let's see if we can do it. Let's see if we can actually fly uh, under visual flight rules at night, which is the true test of the scenery, really. Um, I do have a private pilot's license, and I do have a night rating. Uh, in the UK, your night rating is something that you do separately to your PPL. I know in the States, it's all bundled together. Uh, but a lot of the guys in the UK don't have a night rating. Uh, they either don't want to get it or afraid to get it or just never bothered. Um, but it's something I wanted to do and I really, really enjoyed flying at night. Um, so I want to show you some of that. So what I want to do is take a flight from somewhere that uh, basically I, I know the area quite well. Uh, I've flown in and out of South End Airport a few times uh, at night as well, so I know what it looks like. So we're going to see if it matches up. The, I, I live in Chelmsford, by the way, in case you didn't know. And this is my patch. This is where I kind of fly around. Uh, I fly out of North Weald Airfield, which is just over here, near the M11 in Harlow. Anyway, I digress. We're going to be flying out of South End. South End Airport is along the coast here. And south, if you just zoom in and then flick to the satellite view, there you go, you can see South End. We'll be taking off on runway 23. 23 is very common at South End. Uh, they do have international flights out of here. I, you know, EasyJet fly out of here, uh, Dash 8s fly out of here. I never forget when I was a student, I actually lined up here and um, watched a Dash 8 land. And then another time I was coming in and an EasyJet A320, I think it was, or an A319 lined up and had to wait for me to land, which was <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. Anyway, <laughs> this is the apron. This is the north apron, the south apron. And uh, we'll start here somewhere. And what we'll do is we'll taxi around. Uh, we go past all the stands here and they have you taxi over. There's no actual run up zone. But what the GA guys do is they tend to sort of stop here, turn towards the window a little bit, do the run up checks and then uh, and then get asked to take off on two, three. So. We're going to take off on 2-3, and in terms of the visual stuff, this is where it gets different, because at night, you don't use the same reference points as you do in the day. You use some of them, but for example, water and lakes and things like this, and trees and forests, all of that is pretty much not visible at night, depending on what time and what time it is. Like, if it's super, super dark, you won't see them. If there's moonlight, you might catch some moonlight, but you basically can't rely on them. Uh, for example, Hanningfield Reservoir, we're just not even going to see it, whereas in the daytime, we'll use that. What we're going to look for is things like roads. Uh, major roads are really good. So we'll, what we'll try and do is take off out of 23, pick up this 127, which is a road that goes all the way into the M25 here. So this is a really useful road. Uh, extra visual references that we'll have. Um, we, we need to be looking at the compass. We're going to be flying west. So South End's going to be behind us. We're going to make sure we're flying west. We're going to pick up this major road. Uh, we should see the 130 cross over it. We should see Basildon, which is quite a big um, town here and Wickford, so they'll be visual clues. Cities are really good because they're well lit at night. Uh, so we'll fly between those two. We'll keep going down the 127. We'll then see Brentwood lit up on our right. And motorways are super easy to find. So the M25 is here and uh, we're gonna keep going. But at this point, we're gonna turn south because our destination is London City Airport. And um, we're just gonna fly straight in uh, to London City Airport. Now, City Airport, um, if we kept on the 127, it would kind of take us in the wrong direction. So what we're going to do is turn and fly along the M25 to a pick up this A13. We may or may not see the river, depending on the night, uh, the lighting. So we're going to fly along the A13 until we see the airport, at which point we'll take, we'll branch off and come in for an approach. Uh, the, the London City Airport is where the, the O2 is actually here. So we probably see that, although I don't think it will be lit up. But we may see some of the skyscrapers uh, over here in the financial districts of the Isle of Dogs and Canary Wharf. So we'll have that as a background. It should be a nice flight. Now, in terms of weather and stuff, this is where we need to be quite careful um, because we need to make sure we've got the right conditions for flying. So we're going to pick South End initially. We won't start off on 2-3. We're going to start off on one of the GA parking ramps. The high 20s, I think, put us in the north. Let's we'll try 23 as the parking. Uh, we're going to arrive into London City. We'll go straight in on 27. That's fine. 
Uh, so EGMC to EGLC VFR direct. That's that's fine. We're not even going to use this anyway. We're going to load deliberately into a Robin DR400, which has no GPS system, so we can't cheat effectively. We have to fly at night, and it, it's really cool. It's really interesting. Uh, but I will show you a trick you can use if you're trying it for the first time, uh, just to make sure you don't get lost. Uh, flight conditions. I have built a preset called Night Flying VFR. And what that effectively does is bring up the cloud, bottom cloud level to about four and a half thousand, uh, which is uh, which is good. We'll be flying at about 2,000 feet. Temperature is uh, low. It's eight Celsius outside, which by the time we get up, uh, a couple of thousand feet that will be down to about four celsius which is you know well into you know carb icing territory and we're in december of course we need to have that so we'll set the time of day to about uh about 16 30 let's make it a bit later 16 45 it's well past sunset but hopefully hopefully we'll have a little bit of night light uh just so that we can you can see things look a bit nicer. So we'll try that. We'll give it a go. Uh, we'll jump into, oops, we'll jump into the cockpit, fire up the DR400 and go for it. And here we are in the cockpit. Notice that we have a little headlamp, which is really cool. I really like this. I mean, it's like absolutely necessary, but look at it. Normally when you fly at night, you will have um, I have a headlight and it has two modes. It has this kind of mode, which is useful for doing your inspections outside. And then you flick it onto a red light, um, which is like a night light. It takes about 10 minutes for your night vision to properly kick in. Uh, if you have a white light like this, you lose it. You lose your night vision properly. Um, so you normally fly at night with a red light. But that's okay. We don't appear to be on the north ramp. We appear to be on the south ramp. In fact, I think we're actually the ramps over there i think this pull is in a weird place it doesn't matter we'll have to get a little pushback from this guy so we'll sort that out uh let's fire this thing up and uh, turn on the battery master parking brake is on uh, we're gonna need mixture rich we're gonna have fuel pumps gonna go on crank the throttle a couple of times set a quarter and the ignition is down here. And then... There we go. And she fires up. Okay, fuel pressure's good. Let's bring the RPMs down. Just look at the engine gauges here. They are 1200. All temperatures rising. Nothing's in the red. Let's turn on the alternator. We've got a charge, so that's good. Yep, everything looks good. So the fuel, we've got half a tank of fuel, which is more than enough for this flight. It's not a particularly long flight. Now notice what happens when you put the panel light on. Your headlight automatically turns off. Some nice little features. Uh, let's turn on the intercom. There we go. We'll squawk. Transponder to on. We've got an altitude and set 7,000. There we go, which is a uh, oops. 7,000 is the VFR uh, squawk in the UK. Um, right, so there's a few lighting things we can do here. So if we turn that off, we get this. If we put this one on, you can see you get like an underlighting effect, and you also get red down here, which is interesting. Uh, so maybe they think you're supposed to fly on this. Uh, you've then got extra radio light if you want it. Um, or you can use the panel light, which is this one. So you could kind of fly with the panel light on, which is that. That's the first stage of panel light. Or you could fly with the glare shield light on and fly that way. I find that a little bright. I think I will go with that personally, but, you know, your mileage may vary. So, south end elevation is correct, so the barometer is good. Uh, the compass is aligned. Showing 140. 140. I don't think I've got the 
in quotes failures turned on uh, which will will drift the compass would drift it in real life and you have to keep checking it on the way but notice there's no gps right so we can't cheat we can't do anything to cheat here we have to fly dude can you can you stop pushing me back dude i never asked for this i'm not ready don't you start moving my aircraft i'm in charge here <laughs> shift p by the way does the pushback i'm pretty certain i never pressed shift p so i don't know why he started pushing me back anyway i digress so the, so this the robin doesn't have a fuel injected engine it has a carburetor which means you do have to worry about carburetor icing there's an indicator if i can just remember how to flick my cameras one second there is a an indicator over here as to whether you're in car ice territory and you'll notice that we are. We are in car ice territory, so we do have to worry about car icing. And in you know, when you've got full power on, normal power, it's fine. Carburetor heat comes on when you're descending. It always gets pulled before you descend. It's just the rules. If you don't, because what happens is if you pull the throttle back and you don't have carburetor heat on, you risk getting ice inside the carburetor. And that's bad. So you put the carburetor heat on before you back off on the throttle, which is pretty much whenever you're descending. They're the rules of the game. Uh, so we shall turn on some lights here. I should have already put on my um, beacon light. That was my bad. Put the nav light on now, put the taxi lights on, and see if we can get this guy to push us back. Um, the little cheat that I told you about, if you're trying this when it comes out, press the V key, and you will get a map. It's a VFR map, so you can basically see... Well, you, yeah, I was right. We should have been over here, so it, it doesn't matter. We're at, we're at the the major stands, the bigger aircraft. We'll just push back here, and uh, we'll then taxi, as I told you, down to two, three, and we'll take off. But as we're flying, if you're kind of getting lost, just press the V key and have a look where you are. So we're we're taking off out of MC over here, and we're, we're going to LC over here. And uh, the things to pay attention if you do try this at home. These are the roads. They're not shown particularly clearly. I kind of hope they're going to add some more options for the VFR map so we can, for example, see major towns. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, you know, the Hanningfield Reservoir is over here. It, it is what it is, but here's the road we're going to follow. We're going to follow this. This is the uh, the 127. That's the 130 coming from Chelmsford. Basildon's about here. Uh, and then we've got all the way down to the M25 is there. So that's... That's our goal. Hopefully we don't need to press that, but if we do, you know, we can use it to confirm where we are. Anyway, let's get going because this is going to look spectacular, I feel. I think you're going to enjoy this. Let's shift P. Let's get the boy to push us back. That sounded very Welsh. I'll put the brakes on and we'll release the parking brake. Brakes, come on. There we go. Now, when he starts pushing back, you can actually control the direction with your rudder. So, the point where he starts to move us. Come on, bro, there he goes. So, if I press the left rudder pedal now, he'll start to sort of orient us that way. If I straighten off, if I press the right, you see what I mean? So, basically, he's going to just give us a very simple pushback. Um, I did notice that the taxiway line isn't drawn properly around the apron. Yo, dude, why did you stop that? Okay, whatever. He's decided that's enough. I think we're going to have to drive into these people. Because he's not pushed my, push me back far enough. We'll see what I can do to avoid hitting them. There we go. Alright, I'll do. So normally there's a taxiway line about here, um, which I can't see. Uh, however, it does appear further down here. So I'll try to avoid hitting the grass. Because, frankly, the visibility at the moment's not amazing. There it is. See how the line just carries on here? Hopefully that's something they'll fix because uh, the line needs to go further around. As it does in real life. Now, plenty of people, plenty of GI guys, when they're flown at South End, they always make the wrong turn. It's quite funny. They get lost down here. Because it is a bit dark at this point.
Alright, so what we'll do, we're not going to do all the checks that I would, you know, there's lots of things I would do if I was doing this for real. But I'm not going to do any of that. We're just going to do some flying. But what I will do is I'll quickly do a run up with the car piton just to make sure. Because I know this game, I do have icing simulation turned on, as you probably saw in my uh, icy conditions video. Um, so it will probably ice the carburetor if I'm not careful, knowing this sim. So I'm just going to mitigate that with a quick run-up. Now that this here is not actually a run-up area, as I say, they don't allow that, and that's got an X on it. You're not allowed to go on this bit, but what the GA guys do is taxiway is just wide enough. If you get over here and then just kind of spin around like that, then put the brake on, you can do your run-up checks here. So, uh, you know, basically, isn't it cool how the cockpit is being lit by all this light? Not so sure about those cars, though. <laughs> so, yeah, what you would normally do is do all your run-up checks. What I'm going to do is just pull the car peak control and bring it up to about 1,800 RPM. In fact, why don't I go for that view? So, yeah, you bring it up to about 1,800 RPM or so like this. Let it settle down. And then you would do your magneto checks. So what you're looking for is a drop no more than about 100 and 125. That's a 100 RPM drop. And then it should come back to 1800. And then you do the other magneto. Like that. And that should do roughly the same. There should be about a maximum of 125 RPM deflection. And the difference between the two should be no more than about 75 and that way you know you've got two working magnetos um what i like to do at night is just pull that car piece and just give it a good blast basically like i i really do not risk car icing uh so we'll just give it a quick bit of a run then we'll put that back in and then we'll kill the throttle and make sure we've got an idle idle is important because if you back off on the throttle and this either stalls or idles too high you won't be able to descend properly so that's why we do an idle check as i say failures are not actually enabled anyway so i'm just showing you right i can break this off let's maneuver around Okay, tax lights off, landing lights is on. I would like a bit more. I don't know, the light should be a little bit stronger, I think. Into the distance. It's very hard to see the tarmac. Okay, approach looks clear. Are you ready for this guys? It's gonna be fun. <laughs> Let's just do a rolling start. Okay, runway two, three. Compass is good. DI is good. Mixture's rich, full throttle. We're just going to do a flapless takeoff. It's not worth bothering with the flaps. We've got such a massive runway. That really doesn't matter if we run flaps. Okay. Let it build up a little bit of speed. And up she comes. Now we need to get some good altitude uh, fairly quickly so that we can see the roads and stuff. I'm just going to hold the runway heading for a bit so we pick up that road. I've got a feeling that might be it there already. It's not a slow right turn now. And keep the climb going. Okay, so on our left is Thames Estuary. You can actually see the water because of the it's not completely dark right now. So you can actually see the water. Uh, that's the coastal road down there. That's not the 127. I think this is the 127 here. But we'll have to confirm it. The point is that we're heading roughly west at the moment and we're climbing. We know that London is in that direction, that's the main thing. But we need to establish some landmarks fairly quickly. 
Okay, yeah. I think this is the 127. So this road here. Doesn't it look beautiful, though, eh? Doesn't it look absolutely... Absolutely stunning. Look at this. And I'm getting 60 FPS. And this is just an absolute joy. The really cool thing about this, guys, is honestly, I can practice flights now before I go and do them for real. And that, that really is something. Like, if I've not been to a particular airfield before, I can go and fly over it. Go land at it. I can do it at night and see what it's like before I actually do it for real. And that really is cool. Okay, so this is probably the start of Basildon, which means Wickford would be over there soon. But we're heading west. South end is behind us, so it's all good. We're going to keep keep the 127 on our left here. Uh, you don't actually want to overfly it. You want to be offset from it. it. Just makes it a whole lot easier. I should quickly show you an external camera, I think. Let me um, pop the external on. There we go. Now you can see it in all of its glory. Absolutely stunning. Look at that. Just look at that. Okay, so we see we've got two roads here. We, we've got one over there that could be the 127, and then we've got this one that could be 127. But because right ahead of us is like this area here, looks like Basildon to me. I'm going to assume that this is the 127. We're at 2,000 feet. I'm just going to level it out there. So, attitude, then power. You can get power back now. Looking for about 2,300 RPM in this. And then trim. Okay, that was an aggressive trim. In real life, the trim is a lot easier because we have force feedback effectively. You know, you can feel the stick pulling if it's not trimmed, and then when you bring the trim correctly, the force on the stick just goes. So it's really, really easy to trim in real life, and a lot harder in a sim. It's one of those things that until we get force feedback on a stick, trimming will always be more difficult than it is in real life. Yeah, that is most definitely Basildon. And off to our right, there's Wickford. See? And that's how we do it. So this is 127, but if you're unsure, press the V key and have a look where you are. If you put GPS tracking on, it'll stay with you, but you can see, there you go. So that's the 130 there. And Abiton Reservoir is over that way, so that there is the 130, and that is Chelmsford. And this is why I like flying at night, because you can see so far, it's unbelievable. Like, I can see Chelmsford in the daytime, It'd be very hard to make that out but at night time it just pops so chelmsford wickford basildon london's ahead of us south end behind us it's just amazing i don't see how anybody can be failed to be impressed by that i actually showed the wife some of the screenshots had taken and she actually thought it was a real picture <laughs> I don't know if there's any better re like recommendation for a sim than when it actually looks like real life. So yeah, if I turn this off, see, you could fly like that, but nobody would. You know, I would at this point have a red light on my head to keep my night vision going. You can also fly like that, which personally I don't like. It's a little too bright for me. Um, I, I like that. I think that gives me a decent overview without being too bright. But, you know, whatever works for you. All right, let's keep the uh, altitude going. So I think this, this below us here, if I remember, this is a massive Tesco Extra. That one, though. 
I'm sure it's all been debranded for the sim. They're not allowed to show copyrighted logos, I don't think. Uh, but that, I'm pretty certain that's Tesco. And then over on our left, that's the Thames estuary coming in. So the Thames runs all the way in there and becomes the River Thames. Uh, but around here, it's quite wide. It's called the estuary. There's lots of um, docks around here. Um, what do they call it? Um, oh, what's the area called? Like Corriton, refineries and stuff. So you see a lot of big tankers coming along here, big ships and stuff. Now, I'll tell you what, in real life, I'll tell you what you see quite a bit. Emergency services. Like, if I look out here, I will see I will see vehicles going up and down the road. But an emergency service vehicle, I can see that from miles away. You see the flashing lights just going along the motorway. It's hilarious. Also, you see trains as well. Because you'll see, like, like lots... Trains are lots of white lights just moving very quickly together. So you'll see a train going along the train line, but at night you can't see the train line itself because it's not lit. Whereas in the daytime, VFR, you'll often use a train line as a, as a, a kind of a, a check to where you're flying. Now, up ahead here is a, a road which is crossing us, which could... It could be the motorway. But I don't think it is. And the reason I don't think it is is because there's no... Brentwood. I think that's Brentwood over there, but I think it's too early to be the motorway. Because Brentwood is quite near the motorway. At this point, what I would do is I would glance down at my VFR map, and I would I would be double-checking references at this point. And I don't think... I believe the M25 is the next road along. I don't think this is it. Uh, so yeah, you need to have multiple reference points to make sure that you're not making a mistake and always check your compass. Just checking for drift, it's not drifted. So, London's ahead, but at the moment we can't see anything, we can't see any airports and stuff, which is pretty much as it should be. Time to go external camera, I think. Right, you know what? Let's go. Um, let's go drone camera, and then we can have a look around a little bit. So yeah, you can see kind of south end behind us now. You can see the airport in the distance. Yeah, this this here. I'm almost certain this is the motorway interchange. Problem is when you go drone, you can't control the aircraft and it tends to drift. If you're not on autopilot, it'll drift. So it's something to be aware of. Right, yeah, I'm certain that that will be Brentwood. And that that is where Brentwood connects to the M25, and I'm sure this is the M25. The M25 junction here should be quite big. But again, if you wanted to check, just press the V key. And you can see that, yeah, this is the M25 here. You know, don't be don't be afraid to use the um, the VFR map. It's no different to... Well, I suppose it is. It shows where you are, but it's no different to looking at a VFR map. It's not cheating, apart from it shows where you are. Right, so what we'll do is we're going to turn here. I'm going to keep this on my right side this time. So now we're heading south. This is where we should be heading. And M25 is on our right. And we're looking for the A13, which won't be that. That's too early to be the A13, which is the next road that heads east in that direction. We 
because we want to head that way towards London. There's a major road here, which could be... A, you see this horizontal road here? This coming across could be the A13. Because that is probably Lakeside. So what's happening here is this is Lakeside, I think. Lakeside Shopping Centre. That's the river. And then you've got the Dartford Crossing, which is a massive bridge and a tunnel. And then on the other side is Blue Water Shopping, which is Kent. And the other side of that river is Kent. This is Essex. So, yeah, th there's an interchange here, I think, which is the major one. Because there's nothing between that interchange and this one on the M25. Like, it's literally the next junction is the A13. So I think this is the A13. And then we're going to turn east. Um, at this point, you would be doing things like uh, Carbretta. So that's, that's not Carbretta heat. What am I doing? That's a Carbretta heat. You would be doing things like that. Just bear in mind when you do a carb check, it does actually drop RPMs. So you need to throttle up a little bit. And just, just run the carb through like that. Every time you do uh, your checks, they call them, well, we call them Frida checks. Which, uh, the, there's lots of acronyms in aviation, but a free check is like fuel, radios, engine, DI, uh, altitude. And as part of the engine checks, you would be doing the carb heat and making sure that you've got um, good engine temperatures and pressures. So we're going to turn right here what I believe to be a13 and I think I can make out the I think that might be London City yeah this is Lakeside Shopping Centre here which is quite big and you can actually see the bridge there you see it right there I don't think it's well implemented yet but that is definitely the bridge and this is the junction and I'm pretty certain this is the A13 Managed to gain some altitude doing that. Let's just back off. So now we've got the Thames coming in and become the, the River Thames, and it's flowing around. That is definitely London City. And we are heading west on the A13, and I'm sure of it. So that's good. We'll keep our altitude. Now, London City actually has a quite a high glide slope coming in so the pappy lights are probably set for it's like it's five and a half degrees or something so we will be quite a high glide slope coming in and as my instructor taught me when we did night rating stuff you always white is better than red basically <laughs> to paraphrase Red is dead, as they say. You see, when you're flying at night, you can't see anything on your approach. You can't see things like trees, bushes, power lines, all this kind of stuff. So you need to make sure that you're following the papi lights. Now, this is a full papi light, so it's four lights. And we want to have two white and two red. The more white we have means we're too high. The more red we have means we're too low. The low is bad. Because you might hit something if you're low. If you're too low, you might hit something. If you're too high, the worst that can happen is you just go around. Because you're too high, you can't land, you go around. If you're too low, you might hit something that you can't see. So if ever we get four red lights, that's not good. Right, I'm going to turn off now and we're going to start our um, approach angle. It might be difficult to see the papi lights because of the, uh, I can lean over the nose a little bit. The Robins themselves are quite, um, they don't have a tremendous amount of headroom, particularly compared to a Cessna. Um, well, not for a guy like me, I'm quite tall. Yeah, we'll just come in at this angle and then straighten up. But yeah, this is, uh, this is basically London right now. And it looks absolutely amazing. And so far we've managed to VFR fly at night. 
Up ahead in the distance, it, you know, you would start to see the skyscrapers. But I don't think they've quite hit the draw distance limit just yet, so we can't see them. Okay, we're starting to get white lights, so... Car piece is coming on. Uh, landing lights is on. Alright, we've got three whites, so we'll back off on the throttle now. Get ourselves into flap speed. Like I said, I don't mind having four whites on the Pappy lights. I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with being a bit too high. You can always correct that easily enough. I just don't want to ever be too low. Okay, so brakes are off. Undercarriage down, mixture's rich. Don't have a fuel select from this, but we do have a fuel pump, which should have been on for takeoff. But you most definitely want the fuel pump on for landing. Instruments are looking good. Car beat is hot. We're all secure in the cabin. There's the one red dot. In real life, you can see the white, like the second white light there. You can actually see it just start to go pink when it's about to go red. But uh, I don't think that's going to be simulated. There we go. So now we've got two white, two red. I'm just going to put some power in. Because I don't want three red. Off in the distance there's the O2, but you can't really see it because it's not lit. But you can start to see some of the skyscrapers now. going to nose down slightly. She can see it going pink, I think. Second one. I think I saw it kind of glisten pink. There it goes. Yeah, it did. Cool. That's awesome. What an approach. This looks so good. Okay, back off on the throttle. And we're down. Quite calm conditions, actually. Just what you want from night flying. The thing about night flying is the air is cold. Let's put the um, car heat in. The air is actually very cold, and... Uh, uh, it doesn't have much energy in it, which makes it beautifully smooth. When it's not windy, it's so nice. You just glide around. Okay, and the lights off. Tax lights are coming on. Strobe's going off. And... I think the GA is just over here somewhere. Let's have a look. I think there's some guys up ahead. We'll just park over there. Yeah, there's a light aircraft in front of us. Not sure where he wants us. I think normally they would have marshalers guarding you in, but... We'll just stick it over here as long as he doesn't walk into my aircraft. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, park and brake is set. Avalanche is off. Taxi light is off. 
Uh, trim is still good. Turn the radio system off. Pull the mixture. Uh, fuel pumps going off. Alternator. Magnetos. Battery master. And it immediately flicks back to the little headlight. And we'll go to a quick external camera for you guys. So there you go. Welcome to London City. Well, I hope you enjoyed that flight. I hope that gave you a little taste for what it's like to fly at night. Uh, obviously, in real life, it's uh, it's a lot more interesting and there's a lot more kind of thoroughness that you need to have because it can be, you know, it can be um, risky, if you like, because obviously if you have an engine failure at night, well, looking for a field to land in is, uh, is interesting at best. But the benefits are you just get some utterly wonderful scenery. And there you go. That is London City in the distance. That's the O2. You can see the dome. Hope you enjoyed the flight, guys. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Thank you for all your comments and suggestions. I'm working through them. I've got a big list of stuff. <laughs> I'm reading it. So uh, until the next one, take care, guys. Happy flying.